Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. I'm Noah Lee, two-time INBA world champion, WBFF uh, Diva Fitness Pro. <laughs> So guys, uh, we are, is this the third video we've done for your Fat Loss Series? Third one, number three, yeah. The third video. So we're now uh, nine weeks into Noah's uh, Fat Loss Program and uh, you're doing really well. You're, yeah. you're a weight start, I'm just looking at the stats here. So you were at 202 when you started and you're down to, what, what was today's weigh in? 191.4. That is awesome. So we've hit the 10 pound mark. That's really good. Yeah. And we were progressing towards, was it 185? Was your kind of end? 180 to 185. We don't really have a set goal. I guess it kind of... Depends how you're feeling, How right? I'm feeling, how I'm looking maybe. I, yeah. How I'm feeling really will probably be more of a factor. Yeah, and honestly, that's a really good way to approach it because you didn't have a time frame or a strict goal. I think we'll just assess it week by week. Um, just to see where you're at because towards the end of the diet like it's going to get pretty challenging but if you were a competitor and you're getting on stage we'd be pushing you to get to a certain level of leanness but when there isn't that pressure uh, it might actually be sensible to take a little bit of a break reverse diet up get your calories and your metabolism uh, back to a really good space and then finish the last lot of that uh, diet on like round two essentially so right. so let's have a look at the last two weeks um, have been pretty good for you your week two of your diet targets again so let's uh, backtrack two weeks because um, you've been dieting for two weeks how have you been going so as I was saying back when I got onto the diet macros it was a little bit harder like it, it sucked a little bit more after going from 3,000 <laughs> back down to 2,400 2, yeah 2,400 the first round was easier because you know I didn't have that you know jump from higher to lower calories mm -hmm. and it usually is it's the first couple of days we kind of see uh, people report being a lot more hungry um, but after like day three or four on new low targets, um, we tend to kind of ease back into it again. But that's a fairly normal um, thing to experience. And a lot of people will probably write in as clients and be like, oh, I was absolutely starving this week. Should I be that hungry? Well, yes, you're in a deficit. You're losing weight. If dieting was easy, everyone would be walking around shredded with a six pack. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's going to be difficult, uh, difficult points throughout the diet. but. Um, you've kind of trended down consistently for the last two weeks of this diet. Um, have you found there to be any challenges along the way? Like I know that you mentioned um, in your week of diet break there was a lot of drinking and stuff. Can you talk to me about like peer pressure? I know that's something that's pretty common, especially on college guys. <laughs> yeah, so I am in college and I've been, you know, counting macros and dieting and whatnot for pretty much my whole college career. And yeah, it can be tough. I mean, I have the friends, you know, they want to go out and drink mm -hmm. and have a good time with me. Yeah. And um, I think a big thing is trying to explain to them, like, I'm doing this, like, you know, this is only, you know, three, four, five months out of the year, five at the really high end. Yeah. The rest of them, you know, I'm able to go out and drink with you and have fun, but yeah. like, I just can't afford the calories, you know. Yeah. I usually end up having to like, get out a little whiteboard and explain to them like, <laughs> this is why and whatnot, but. Um, so what has been your strategy? Um, and this probably applies to a lot of people that are trying to diet, you know, there's always pressures of, they'll come around this weekend or we're going out or we've got this and everything is always food or alcohol focused as we kind of, Get into adulthood so what's been your uh, approach to make sure that you can still kind of socialize and fit a little bit in right so i try if i'm going to drink and i know that i'm going to drink mm -hmm. i will um a lot one high day yep so i will decrease my calories for six days out of the week so yep. that i can increase them for that one day yeah and um so during that day where i know that i'm going to drink i'll usually just eat protein for most of the morning afternoon the only carbs that I'll really have is before and after training. Yep. And that'll, you know, save me the carbs and fats that I can have and go, you know, enjoy a few whiskey and diets. Yeah, of course. So obviously we know uh, alcohol has a caloric value of seven calories per gram. So what we can do, even though most of the macro trackers don't have an alcohol column to track those calories, what we can do is um, subtract them from carbohydrate and fat. So to give you an example, let's say a regular beer, like, I don't know, a 
What's the standard? It's like 375 ml bottle of uh, beer. Yeah, 12 ounces. A 12 ounce might have, um, let's say, 250 calories, right? Um, we could take out that um, the calories from our carbohydrates and fats. So if I was going to subtract those calories from carbohydrate, for instance, uh, I would go 200 and, 250 calories divided by four. And whatever that number is, uh, that would be the amount of calories, sorry, that would be the number of grams of carbohydrate I would have less on that day to factor in the alcohol. Okay, does that make sense? Because we can use those calories kind of freely. Right. What I do is I'll take, so for every drink I'll have, I'll divide the total calories by four, and then I'll do the next one by nine. Yeah, just for to, fat. So just to video. try and keep it even so I'm not putting in, you know, 450 grams of carbs and like yep. 35 grams of fats. Right, I think that's a really smart idea to kind of subtract from both rather than going full hog ho on one of the macros right. and then ends up kind of really skewing potentially your way in the next day. Because if we do um, modify our carbohydrates and fats drastically, let's say you um, pull your carbohydrate source right down to like, I don't know, 100 grams for one day, and normally it's sitting over 200, uh, what will end up happening is that our dietary fiber intakes are really drastically affected. And then obviously that can affect our GI motility, your uh, reg regularity of like going to the bathroom, and that can affect your weight by quite a bit. So I think the approach of taking some from both is really smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, on my diet break, so I think I've mentioned it before, but I was, you know, drinking a good bit. I had family in town and I was, I found myself giving up too many carbs and fats for alcohol and my training was shit, it, you know, wasn't good. And then once I got back on the diet macros, I started to get those carbs and fats and stop drinking and um, my training just picked up. I felt way better even on the lower calories. Yeah, and that's the thing, I think um, there's a fine line um, that you ride when you start to include too much alcohol. Um, usually my rule of thumb, I'm not sure what you're kind of talking to your clients with, but I usually say, you know, two to three drinks kind of is a maximum because that's when we start to lose our ability to say no. Um, you know, our perception is a little skewed. We tend to give in a little bit more easy, um, perhaps to, you know, snacking on more foods when you get home late in the evening and just making poor choices. And then not to mention if you're staying up late, then you're going to be really tired and that's going to affect your performance if you're training the next day. So, yeah, I think um, it's a really uh, smart thing to do is just keep an eye on how much alcohol you're consuming. Yeah, just be smart. I mean, if you're in college, <laughs> you're going to have to have those tough conversations with your uh, your mates. So yeah. just hang in there tough and if they're good friends, they'll understand. Now, uh, before we go and take a look at your data for the last couple of weeks, uh, you're going on an overseas trip um, this weekend, actually. I am. I'm going to visit the missus over in Italy. Wow. So. And how long is that flight? That flight is, I think, between 10 and 10 and a half hours mm. from Miami to Milan, Italy. Well, I mean, it's a nice destination to get to at the end, so it's not too bad. I think uh, I will, no one can ever give anyone shit when they've done the flight from Australia to the USA or to Florida. Yeah, it's like one of the longest trips in the world. Right. So when it, no, I was like, oh, right, 10 and a half hours, I'm like, that's nothing. <laughs> but one of the questions that we uh, often get is how to track macros when you're traveling between different time differences because sometimes you're going flying out late in the evening and you're getting um getting to a place like first thing in the morning so now do you want to explain what we're doing uh what you're going to be doing when you travel to italy on the week yeah so i'm going to be getting to italy around nine in the morning their time so it'll be like three four a.m here so what i'm going to do is i am going to you know take it easy on the eating. I'm gonna fast for a little bit throughout the day. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try and backload my calories mm -hmm. later in the day just to try and help with my hunger yeah. and uh, get back on track. Because he's waking up, like technically it's so early in the morning if, um, when you're arriving. So you're probably still gonna feel like eating because it's gonna be daylight. So um, rather than um, kind of eating all of his calories earlier in the day, uh, I think spreading them out is going to be super important for you um, just so that you're not like done with all your calories and it's only like 4 p.m. in the afternoon their time and it's still only like, I don't know, 1, 1 p.m. here. Yeah, so, so. If, I, if I finish my calories over there when I arrive at 6 p.m. their time, I will, I will feel like I'm done with my calories by noon here. Right. So. Mm. 
Gotta be careful. Yeah, so uh, traveling is always a really tough one. It depends on the flight schedule because sometimes you're going back in time as well, like yeah. depending on where you're traveling. So um, yeah, it can be tough, but we will certainly, that'll come up at some point. Yeah, uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Noah David Lee because I'm gonna be sharing a lot of tips for how to hit your macros when you're dieting and traveling. Yeah, you're gonna do some vlogging while you're away, uh, right? Yeah. Cool. cool. Well, let's go upstairs, have a look at your data for the last few weeks. Um, we'll talk about the changes that we've made and the adjustments to your macros, and I think that's probably about all we'll have time for this week. Yep. Let's do it. Alrighty, so we've got Noah's information on the screen. So um, this week here, you can see my arrow or mouse was Noah's first week back on his diet. And then as we come down, um, this is actually just starting this week. So it's Wednesday here now. Um, so he's entered in his data for the first couple of days. So Noah, do you want to run through kind of what's happening here um, with your um, tracking and why I <laughs> might have highlighted things in red and in green. <laughs> yeah, so I guess a problem that I run into is that I will start off my day. I'm a person that enjoys a big breakfast or a big first meal of the day. Yep. But I usually don't eat until noon. So mm -hmm. I do kind of a little bit of intermittent fasting. fasting. Yep. Uh, that's, a pro that's like the fancy term. I just call it skipping breakfast. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I my main focus is protein, yep. and then you know my non-protein calories. I'm kind of just like, okay, I'll wait until you know a couple meals in, and then I'll start worrying about hitting my certain macros. Which, I mean, I guess as my calories are getting lower, I'm gonna have to start you know strategizing a little better and not you know yeah putting it off till later. But I mean, there are some reds, but I still pretty much hit my calories. Yeah, I do so have a few high days. If we look here at Noah's averages, so his target for his carbohydrates was 260 and he averaged 277. So um, that's why it's highlighted, it's come up as red right. because it's technically not compliant. But if we look at his fats, his target was 72 uh, and he's actually under consumed his fat. So his average intake was 64. And you can see it fluctuates quite a bit here. So from as high as 83 uh, and as low as say 46. Yeah, so I, okay. So I do have a reason <laughs> for that. And that's okay. because um, I need variety in foods. Like I can't keep eating the same stuff. Like yep. the same like lean proteins will get old. So I'll, you know, start eating stuff like chicken or turkey sausages or mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm always trying to change up the variety in my food. It sometimes that means that I'm going to have a higher carbohydrate favored day or yeah. a higher fat favored day. Yeah, and for the most part, that's perfectly fine to do, uh, provided that your protein intakes are consistent, which Noah is doing. He's really dead on with his protein every day. Uh, and if we have a look at his calories, so therefore his remaining calories are coming from carbs and fats, that ratio tends not to matter so much. So. Uh, there's a couple of days that have kind of rung up red, which suggests that he's a little bit over, but uh, it's very negligible. And if we actually come down to the average, um, his average calorie intakes are right on point with his target. So that means that he's had some days that are higher uh, and some days that are lower. So overall, you've had a really good week. Your compliance was 99% to calories and 100% to protein. So you've done really well. And your weight, that's looking pretty good. So it's come from as high as 195.6. Um, and that looks like you kind of jumped up a little bit here, but that's off the tail end of some high fiber days. Right, yeah. Like I said, I know we've talked about fiber before, but yeah. the lower the calories, the more important it gets to make sure, you know, not getting backed up and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. And you've trended down all week, and then as we've entered into the new week, we didn't actually make any changes um, to your targets because you were continuing to lose, right? Um, so yeah, you're down to 191 um, this week, which is really good. So I think you're probably going to probably dip under the 190 mark if things keep trending the way they are this week, which is exciting for you. Yeah, I mean, um, I think we set a goal to be around 190 when I left for mm -hmm. my trip. and You're going to be right there. It's amazing when the math and the science just works out, isn't it? Just works. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think uh, Noah, you're going to do really well while you're away. Um, I think you'll be scheduled for a diet break while you're in Italy, or at least a couple of those, those days. You'll get some higher intakes, which will be nice. Um, I think that's all we need to kind of run over this week. Is there anything else you want to add? No. Um, looking forward to you know having a good trip, filling you guys in, hopefully providing some tips and 
you know, keep losing weight. Awesome. Thanks, Noah. And thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. Uh, Noah, I think you've just created your own new, brand new YouTube channel. So. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what if there's a specific <laughs> handle. Just type in my name. It's got something about BioLane in there. So <laughs> follow me. I'm going to be putting up videos, vlogs on my trip. Yes. And Sh Noah is obviously one of our uh, latest additions to the coaching team here at BioLane. So uh, if you have any questions for him or you have questions for me, uh, please drop a comment in the description below and thank you for watching. Thanks guys.